Now let's talk about uh, briefly what happens when that sugar gets pulled out of the blood when insulin goes up. Okay, so there's three situations that occur. Number one, that energy, that sugar could be used as energy, immediate energy. Let's say you're exercising, so you're going to be using up your energy or doing a marathon, the person's eating sugar and it's kind of burning up. Or number two, it's being stored as sugar, uh, that's stored sugar in your liver and in the muscles. Um, so we want that to happen because um, if it's stored, then it's not converted to fat. Okay, so I'd rather have stored sugar than fat, right? Because stored sugar is just going to use for energy, but we don't want too much. So there's a certain amount of sugar that's stored in the body. But in order to store this sugar right here, what happens is that you need potassium, all right? Without potassium, you can't store sugar. So for every sugar, a little molecule, you need one potassium molecule like that. So potassium is like the glue to hold the sugar together. So with low potassium levels, the person will start craving sugar. Why? Because they can't store sugar. So they crave sugar. Why? Because the sugars are going down and the body's telling you, give me that sugar. So the symptom of cravings means your body has low blood sugar and it's really low potassium. So what, is hap what happens when people crave sugar? They go eat sugar, right? What they should consume is potassium. Now the problem that most people have is they don't really know how much potassium they need on a daily basis. An average body needs 4,700 milligrams. That's a lot. Uh, in fact, one banana is 400, so you'd have to have 10 bananas. That's not going to work. So we really need, our bodies need seven cups minimum of vegetable every single day. Now, if you're doing one cup or two cup, it's not going to cut it. And you, if you're taking a pill, it's like 40 milligrams, you have to have like 100 of them. So we want to do the vegetable. So you can do the kale shake for breakfast as part of it um, and then have your eggs, whatever. And then for lunch, have this huge salad. For dinner, have some more vegetable. But we really want to shoot for seven cups. And if you're at all interested in managing or improving your blood sugar issues, this is a must, especially if you have diabetes. Okay, so we want stored sugar. And then it also, if there's too much sugar to be pulling out and that sugar's not being used as energy and you don't have potassium, guess what? It goes right to fat. So it's being converted to fat. So that is one relationship between potassium and fat. If you don't consume enough vegetables or potassium, you tend to gain more fat. All right, so that's just, those are the three things that occur with where the sugar goes after you consume sugar and the spike of the hormone insulin from the pancreas. Potassium is particularly abundant in fruits and vegetables. A greater fruit and vegetable consumption has already been shown to protect against occurrence of stroke. Uh, according to another meta-analysis, five or more servings of fruits and vegetables per day associated with a quarter lower rate of stroke compared with three or fewer servings. And it's not just bananas. Uh, Chiquita must have had some great PR firm or something. I don't know why that's like one of the only things people know about nutrition. In reality, bananas don't even make the top 50 sources. Coming in at number 86, right behind fast food vanilla milkshakes. And only then, bananas. In reality, um, uh, the top five sources are tomato and orange concentrates, and then in terms of the best whole foods, greens, beans, and dates.